Ladies and, Ladies gentlemen, and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to, you to you all as we wish, wish the, the, as we witness, witness the handover, the handover of, assets of assets that were that corruptly, corruptly acquired, acquired now, now being returned, returned to public, to public entities, entities and, and county, county governments. governments. This, event this event marks a marks significant, significant milestone in our, in our nation's, nation's fight, fight against, against corruption. corruption. The efforts, the efforts made, made and the and progress, progress achieved, achieved in promoting, in promoting good, good governance are, are undeniable, undeniable and highly, and highly commendable. commendable. The, government the government remains resolute, resolute in, in eliminating opportunities, opportunities for corruption, for corruption and, and abuse of office, of office and in, and in ensuring, ensuring that the corrupt, that corrupt do not, do not enjoy, enjoy the proceeds, the proceeds of, their of their illicit, illicit actions. actions. I recognize, I recognize the good, the good governance, governance. I recognize, I recognize that, good that good governance is a key, is a key factor, factor in the success, in the success of, the of the bottom of the economic transformation agenda. agenda. Governance, governance is crucial, is crucial for, for fostering an environment, an environment conducive, conducive to socio-economic social transformation. transformation. To realize, to realize our, aspirations, our aspirations, we must, we must all strengthen, strengthen our, commitment our commitment to the rule, to of, the rule of law, enhance, enhance access to justice, justice Promote, promote national, national values, values and, principles and principles of governance, governance and, protect and protect fundamental, fundamental rights, rights and freedoms, freedoms. enforcing and zero, zero tolerance, tolerance corruption, corruption is, is essential, essential for, the, for attain the attainment of all these goals. To achieve this, the government is committed to further strengthen our anti-corruption institutional framework. In this regard, the enhanced implementation of the National Ethics and Anti-Corruption Policy, Sessional Paper Number 2 of 2018, is critical. Our aim is to significantly reduce the severity of corruption and the prevalence of unethical practices by providing a comprehensive framework to promote integrity and combat corruption in a sustainable manner. And that is why I believe in building the institutional capacity of EACC to forestall corruption before it happens and to deal with the challenges of corruption in a manner that is a whole of institution approach. I acknowledge the notable milestones achieved by the EACC in the fight against corruption, particularly through the recovery of corruptly acquired assets and unexplained wealth. Such successes play a vital role in deterring corruption by demonstrating that in the end, corruption is not worth the trouble, as the corrupt ultimately lose everything they have taken from the people. I therefore commend the ESCC for recovering assets valued at approximately 28 billion over the last five years, including both cash movable and immovable assets. The ESCC has also effectively intervened to prevent the loss of public funds amounting to an estimated 41 billion by deploying various strategies to disrupt corrupt networks. Additionally, I am encouraged that the ESCC is pursuing the forfeiture of unexplained wealth valued at Kenya shillings 59 billion through ongoing court proceedings against individuals whose assets and interests significantly exceed their known legitimate sources of income. And I want to encourage ESCC to expedite and also ask the judiciary to expedite these processes so that public resources and public assets can be recovered. As we witness the handover of public assets recovered by the ESCC on behalf of various public institutions, I urge the beneficiaries to establish robust mechanisms to protect these assets and prevent further illegal acquisition. The recovered land is located in various parts of the country, including Nairobi, Kisi, Nakuru, Ungoma, Kakamega, Wasingishu, and Kisi counties. I would like to take this opportunity to express my profound gratitude for the ongoing development of affordable housing in Nairobi City's industrial area of Enterprise Road. This development is taking place on land recovered by the ESCC, and the beneficiaries will be many Kenyans who deserve economic inclusion. This land measuring 21 
hectares had been unlawfully taken from the meteorological department by private individuals. The recovery of such assets reaffirms Kenya's commitment to upholding the Constitution and fulfilling its obligation as a member of the international community under the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. Ladies and gentlemen, corruption is a serious threat to our nation. It undermines service delivery, weakens public policy, compromises the public interest, and erodes our institutions, depriving the government of capacity to secure the country and deliver development. Corruption endangers all of us, both individually and collectively. As I have pre previously committed, we are working on a series of amendments to present to Parliament aimed at promoting accountable leadership and integrity in governance. Among this is the proposal to the Evidence Act and the Criminal Proceeding and Procedure Code, along with other relevant legislative updates to statutes concerning corruption. These amendments will expedite the investigation and prosecution of corruption and economic crimes, ensuring that such cases are concluded within six months. I made this commitment, and the Attorney General is seized with the necessary work that will go into us engaging Parliament on the amendments to achieve this aim. Additionally, we will propose amendments to the Witness Protection Act to revamp the statutory and institutional framework for protecting and incentivizing whistleblowers. These changes will enhance witness protection and make it easier and safer for citizens to report corruption and other criminal activities. We will also be proposing amendments to the Public Finance Management Act and the Public Procurement and Disposal Act. The goal here is to overhaul the institutional and operational framework of public procurement, which is the biggest challenge that we have. In fact, it's correct to say this is where the devil actually lives, which has been identified as a key area of corruption conflict of interest and abuse of office in the public sector. These amendments aim to deploy digital infrastructure to create an open, transparent public procurement platform, allowing real-time, end-to-end public visibility of the entire process from advertisement to contract award. Number four, I have engaged with parliamentary leadership and urged Parliament to swiftly pass the conflict of interest bill. I am told there is a mediation process that is going on in Parliament, but I have told them with clarity that I will veto any bill that does not establish a high standard of accountability, integrity, and anti-corruption measures and I will fully exercise my powers under Article 115 of the Constitution to ensure that the bill meets the rigorous standards set out in the original draft bill. Because some amendments have been introduced to water down what the original bill envisaged. We must do everything within our power to end corruption in every organization, at every level of government, and across all regions of our republic. To this end, everyone entrusted with public authority must be held to high standards of transparency and accountability. Parliament and all stakeholders must work together to strengthen the anti-corruption legal framework, ensuring the swift resolution of corruption cases. We must also foster partnership to raise public awareness of Chapter 6 of the Constitution, integrate anti-corruption education into school curriculum, and support grassroots organizations and citizen action groups in promoting good governance at every level. I commend the EACC.
for its dedication in the fight against corruption. And I want to confirm to both the chair, the commission, and the CEO that they have my government's full support. And we commend you for what you have achieved. We know there are, uh, we know there are challenges, budgetary challenges, but the one item that I insisted that should not face the budget cuts that we were going through is the ESCC, because I know the importance and relevance of what you do in safeguarding public assets and public property. Um, on a positive side, the officers that move from ESCC to join other government agencies is actually a testimony that you have some of the best, and that is why others come for them. Continue to train high-quality staff, even if you lose some of them to other government agencies, because the fight against corruption must, be, must not only be limited to ESCC, it must be an exercise of the whole of government that we manage, deal, and eliminate corruption in its forms, all forms. Let me also um, assure you that I have heard what the CEO has said passionately about staff at the ESCC and what needs to happen. Um, we will continue to look at the frameworks that exist, the, e the uh, salaries and uh, uh, commission is seized with all these matters and we must continue to respect uh, the salaries uh, uh, commission because they help us manage the resources that we have within um, the exigencies of all the requirements that come from all departments. But taking into account what uh, the CEO has said and what ESCC is doing in protecting public property, I think it's an engagement worth having with the Salaries uh, Commission. So we will look at uh, the opportunities available and as we turn around our economy, and I'm very happy with the progress that we have made, we should be able to make additional resources available for ESCC to continue the good job that they are doing. I also want uh, to state categorically that um, um, the, the, the other measures that we have, um, we have, we have proposed uh, from the Evidence Act to Witness Protection Act to Public Procurement Act. These are time bound, and I want to ask the Office of the Attorney General to expedite these pieces of legislation so that we can strengthen our legal framework in the fight against corruption and protect public property. I am a great believer in building these institutions and allowing the institutions to execute their mandate. The chairman here will tell you who was uh, uh, my pastor before he retired, that I have never called him to tell him anything about what he is supposed to do with the corrupt. Because I am a great believer that institutions should deal with their issues and manage the mandate that they have and deal with any matter, anybody, every person in the manner in which the law provides. Because at the bottom of the line is that we are a country of the rule of law. And each and every one of us must subject themselves to the rule of law. Otherwise, if we have different rules for different people, we will end up with the animal farm. And I don't think that is where we want to take our country. And so, um, my ask also of our judiciary is to expedite the corruption cases and indeed every other matter in court in a manner that gives the country the opportunity to move forward, to make decisions, to recover what we can recover, 
and to allow the country uh, to move forward. Um, I know uh, indicated to me the budgetary challenges that they have, and uh, I think it's the case with uh, all our other institutions, and it is a bigger statement as to what we need to do as Kenyans on how uh, to make sure that we use the resources we have in a very prudent manner and we also find ways and means of ensuring that we have sufficient resources and we account for them. Whatever taxes Kenya pay, Kenyans pay, we must account for them so that we can have the opportunity to grow the pie for us to be able to meet all the expenses and all the budgetary allocations that are being requested of us from different uh, institutions. I also wish to say that uh, we should have a whole of government approach when we are discussing resources. And we must all be alive to the fact that resources are raised. And so we must all contribute to making sure that we have the requisite resources to be able to meet all the needs and the requirements of uh, all the institutions that support our governance structure and provide the resources for the development of our country. I am very confident that working together between the judiciary, the legislature and the executive, as we have undertaken, we should be able to move the country pretty fast into the next level. So, again, I commend ESCC, and I want to assure them that we will continue to undertake necessary reforms to strengthen oversight institutions and improve service delivery to all the people of Kenya. And I'm asking all arms of government to work together in concert to make sure that we not only raise the resources that are necessary for us to run the affairs of our nation, but resources raised must also be protected by all of us, making sure that we account for every tax that is paid for uh, by the people of Kenya and those who corruptly acquire them are made to pay and assets and properties and resources recovered in the manner in which ESCC have done. So thank you very much. My very best wishes, and again to ESCC, congratulations.